look to an, a, a good looking office commercial building, which is what it, the area has been designated for for years, but we don't really have any way of having, you know, homeowners move out and make an office out of it, but this has been an office area for quite a while, and now it's going to look like a real office area, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. One thing I'd like to mention is, is your attention to the alley side. We've got a number of buildings in Canby whose visual access, if not actual access, is from the alley. And in some cases, the uh, original architects didn't pay any attention to the fact that a large part of their building was going to be visible uh, that faced the alley. So I, I, I appreciate your concern. Uh, love what you did here, but also for the, for the Legion. Um, you're leaving quite a legacy for uh, Canby. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a four-sided building, clearly. You know, and as you come into Canby off Ivy, it's fairly visible, the facade. They've done wonderful things off the alley you know, with that landscape yeah. courtyard. And really, this is just kind of picking up on that and enhancing it. It shows up somewhat on that uh, floor plan and site plan above. That's actually got south facing up. And you can see the uh, courtyard elements. That illustrates the, the darker rectangles, I guess, illustrate the entrance pavilions, if you will, uh, relative to the building. Well, during our festivals, three on three and Wake Park and things like that, where we have visitors to Canby, this type of thing helps class up the city. Very good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other comments, questions? And I'll entertain a motion. Chairman, I move to approve the matching grant for up to $25,000 for Trinity Counseling and Wellness Service under the guidelines of Downtown Canby Facade Improvement Program. I'll second. Uh, the motion by Commissioner Carson, seconded by Commissioner Daniels, to approve the matching grant of up to $25,000 for the Trinity Counseling and Wellness Services, Inc., under the guidelines of the Downtown Canby Facade Improvement Program. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And it's passed unanimously. Thank you. Looking forward to it. All right, the next item is the facade improvement matching grant application for the American Legion post number 122. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited about this one. This is, this is the one I'm most excited about. This is cool. Hopefully my tapes will hold here. <laughs> start by thanking Renata for all of her support. We, we played a bit of a ping pong game on we're going to do it, we're not going to do it. It's, it got, like most projects, it, get, it went from twenty-five to 80000 and <laughs> we kept going back. And I thought, I'm not asking for any more money. But uh, it is a huge improvement to uh, an investment in the building that we own outright. And uh, I think the timing is right with the first street improvement. We, uh, we look forward to getting it done as quickly as possible. I thank the URD for their uh, portion of the funding to get this going. I think, it's, I think it'll be a very nice looking building on, uh, on First Street. And give us, American Legion is the, the largest veterans organization in the world. And um, so we want to keep that strong in, in our community and this will give us ADA access at the front door, make it more of a, you know, the aluminum windows are more of a street improvement. It strikes me that the two probably biggest impact of facade improvements, from my opinion, that we've had was Canby Herald and Ebner's, and this is probably going to push them off the board mm -hmm. as number one. <laughs> this is this will be a tremendous improvement yeah. along First Avenue. Well, it's such a, I mean, it's a, one, it's, I think, an iconic building yeah. downtown. And it's got really a, a huge presence on First Avenue. So just that change alone is uh, going to resonate in so many different ways. 
Well, I'm very. Uh, I, I took a look at what the final cost cost was eighty eighty thousand dollars. I think at one point we were we're looking at a, at a lower figure than that. So I appreciate the fact. I, I appreciate the the uh, legions uh, sticking in there, uh, echoing what's uh, said that this um, is 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 really a turning point. I think for First Avenue that you have a, a dignified place. Uh, it, that, that honors our veterans, I think, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you're taking the lead, showing some leadership, and, and I, I think it's just the start of, of uh, renovation up and down on First Avenue. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions of Mr. Beck? Or well, if you'd like, I can speak briefly. <laughs> yeah, 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 please do. <laughs> Tell us yeah. how good it's going to be for you. Um, this building was originally a theater movie theater in Canby, Oregon, huh. and uh, this portion out here was the original marquee. It was just a flat leveled element that sticks out, and uh, they constructed a, an mm -hmm. awning above that. The building's an unreinforced masonry structure, mm -hmm. which in seismic events, you know, isn't the strongest of buildings, so there's some limitations. Without getting too far into the details, we have to be kind of delicate how we treat the building. So, um, you know, at first I thought about tearing all that off and doing something radically different with steel awnings or something, but it's not practical uh, because of the structure. So really what we're going to do is we're going to strip off all the wood siding, and, and this had a much taller uh, mansard on it now that came up quite high. We're going to tear all that off, we'll leave that existing cantilevered structure, and then build a, a flatter pitched awning with metal roofing on top of that. We're also looking to add this element above the uh, existing parapet line, then we'll have to brace that back to the roof structure for wind and seismic. That provides an opportunity for a nice sign element, and then cap it off, you know, with some cornice detail to add some interest um, to the building. Also, you know, really to try to make it a bit more inviting to the public, opening up the entrance, adding an aluminum storefront mm -hmm. system, and then part of that as well with the uh, handicap ramp and stair. And then lastly, you know, to give it kind of a base middle top with looking at doing a stone uh, wains coating. And then the other elements are uh, metal siding, pilasters, and, and fill. Uh, hopefully we can get going on it soon. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the weather, I guess, you know, for that season. And I don't know, uh, that's a question I had about funds. As you approve projects, now, let's say something happened, weather doesn't cooperate, this gets pushed to spring. I'm curious how that, what Still, the limitations are on that. It's in our fiscal year, so we sign off, it's, good. it's best to keep it inside our fiscal year. But Yeah, in this case, you know, as we're pushing it, our seasons are short for construction, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, thank you. Any questions? That's great. That's yeah. beautiful. Another good job, Mr. Beck. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. I would move we approve the matching grant for up to $25,000 for the American Legion Post number 122 under the guidelines of the Downtown Canby Facade Improvement Program. Second. I'm sorry, who's the second? Dale. Fight number. <laughs> uh, motion by Commissioner Hensley, second by Commissioner Dale to approve the matching grant of up to $25,000 for the American Legion Post number 122 under the guidelines of the Downtown Canby Facade Improvement Program. Discussion? Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign. Passes unanimously. We've dealt with the T-line design application, so now we'll move into the Canby. Can Thanks, can Thanks very much. Thank you. That's great. is Candy Music, and we have with us today Hannah Feely, and you see the results of her artistic talents in the uh, application for you. I'll let her talk a little bit about the project. Hi there. Like she said, my name is Hannah Feely. I teach piano down at Candy Music. My boss, Brian, actually got me involved on this little project, and what we have planned is... Can they take a look at that, actually, while I talk to them? We have. Oh, great. Okay. 
And um, basically what we're doing is just a refitting of the awning. There's no structural improvement needed. Basically they just take off the awning and put a new one on. And we're getting a black one that's just a little bit sleeker and more modern looking. And it does have the two color logo on the front that's that everyone will recognize. And then basically the only other improvement that's needed is just the paint. It's chipping, it's falling off, it needs to be trimmed. And Brian and I are happy to do it ourselves. We're going to get out there, and, and I'm serious, we're going to get out there, we're going to paint it ourselves. And um, So that's really all we have planned, just this updated paint, new awning. And um, We did get two coats for the awning, but the only difference between the two is that the first one is the two color awning, the second one is only one color. And um, I think Brian said he would just have it the regular yellow, but it wouldn't match the actual logo that we have. And I think the other difference, do we have those two quotes on there? Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, the other difference, I believe, was that there would be another charge if they were to put it up there. Um, I think, I can't remember, but there is an additional charge on there, so he'd prefer the original one, and it is a little bit more expensive, but that's what he'd like. So. That's about it. That's all I got. It's well, just new updated and nicer looks. So, so being a, a piano teacher, yeah. I would have expected the awning to be a keyboard kind of thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he actually has the music notes. Um, they represent the members of his family. There were originally three, and he just has another baby coming on the way, so he added another note up there. <laughs> so I'll leave the notes for Brian. <laughs> Okay, any questions or right. comments? Looks great. Looks great. Yeah. Nice. More? Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that the uh, agency recommend the approval of the matching grant up to $25,000 for the Canby Music under the guidelines of the Canby Downtown Facade Improvement Program. Second. Motion by Commissioner Daniels, second by Commissioner Carson to approve the matching grant of up to $25,000 for Canby Music under the guidelines of the Downtown Canby Facade Improvement Program. Discussion? Just like to encourage, thank them for stepping forward. This is going to be a, real nice to see these things happening on First Street now yes. that we get. Yeah, especially along First with all, all the work that's going on there. It's going to be, a, it's really going to add to the improvements. So good. And I think this also shows flexibility of our program. We've seen some very large projects, yeah. and, and, and here's, here, here's a modest one. So uh, it, it's, it's exciting to see Candy Music. Minimal is a good word. Minimal, very <laughs> minimal. Modest, <laughs> conservative. But it'll make uh, a big difference. A lot know, but it, 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 it has a huge impact, and yeah. Candy Music is, is, is such a perfect match for first time, <clears> so I'm just so glad you guys are there. And it's good, to, it's good to have a Feely teaching uh, music. Down I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, see, did, we, did we take the vote? We didn't take the vote. Okay. Uh, further discussion. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Tell us when you're going to be out there painting so we can t come take a picture of you. <laughs> All right, uh, the next uh, item under new business is Sequoia Parkway presentation. Thank you, Renata, for all the work on that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Chair Garrison and Commissioners. We just uh, want to give you a brief update of the Sequoia Parkway project. We've had a number of meetings with the stakeholders and the designers and staff. Um, and, uh, Kurt McLeod is, is here to update you. They're about 95% through the preliminary design phase. And um, whenever the financing becomes available, the construction could start um, as early as the spring. So we'll move on pretty quickly. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for September 18th. And then following that meeting, we'll be um, setting an open house and we're looking sometime in October. We haven't set a date yet, but we will let you know when we have, have a date. And so with that, I'll have Kurt fill you in on, on where we are with the design. Good evening. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. I mean, that we're, we're approaching completion. We had anticipated being complete by the mid mid September, which is right around the corner. It's about Friday, I think. <laughs> so we're, we're pushing that. But we'll have the plans complete here shortly. The next few things we need to do are uh, complete the stakeholder uh, property acquisitions and the cost estimates. So we've got uh, we've been working with property owners and with the city staff to to resolve some uh, 
conflicts between the agreements. We've had uh, MOUs for each phase of this project for the last 10 years, so we're just working to resolve the last MOU. Uh, cost estimates, we actually just got the first cost estimate back from OBEC today, which is pushing us. And so I'm working with ODEC on some value, with OBEC on some value engineering to keep our costs down to where it's, where it's manageable. Right now it looks like I'm at about $4.2 million, uh, which is, we were at 3.8 when we started this project. Um, and that 4.2 uh, drops my contingency from 600000 down to about 250000 But as we approach completion of design, it's reasonable for the contingency to back off. And some of their design components are, uh, I think we can find alternative ways to do that. So we're, we're working to keep our costs manageable. Um, as Dan mentioned, the, the plans will be complete here shortly. We've met with ODOT and started the process of getting our approval. I think ODOT rail is the only approval we need to have. As soon as that's secured, which could take as little as two months, um, we're ready then to, to proceed whenever the agency is ready to move forward. Uh, we would expect that it would take about, as I mentioned in my memo to you, maybe three months to finalize plans, advertise, solic receive bids, and execute a contract, and then it take about 180 days to complete the project. So our goal should be to complete the project in by the fall. So we're not, you know, not worried about weather for paving. Kirk, somewhere in, in what I read, there was discussion of the, um, I can't remember what it was called, the flyby or the... Team the, track. Huh? Team track. Team track. That team was, track, yeah. what, tell us what, what that's about. Well, the team track was, it was just a, more or less a community access point where private, as I would interpret it, would be private business managing a facility that accommodates uh, just any business coming in to get access to rail. So right now we have spur, for example, at American Metals. They have a railroad spur, but that's their own spur. So a team track concept would be to provide a facility that anybody that wants to ship by rail would have access to rail cars. So it, it's a facility that would have uh, maybe storage on site, maybe and a minimal would have uh, container loading facilities, the ability to forklift containers onto rail cars to load and offload rail cars. So we've looked at a couple of sites that that could work, and I think that they're both, um, there's two ideal sites out there. I think the American Metal site is, is already committed. They use, their, they use all of their property, so it's fully developed, and what, if you look at Google Earth, what's not developed is their stormwater detention facility. Mm -hmm. But the Arneson property is a prime vacant piece of property that has the rail within three or four feet of grade of the bulk of the site. And the same with the Wygant property. So the uh, Wygant LLC property, which is the property north of the railroad, is same uh, within four feet or so of the rail elevation. It would be ideal location. I, and in my mind, I would envision Team Track being a, I would envision it being a, a private entrepreneur development, not a municipal mm -hmm. improvement. Right. But I think that it's something that would pay dividends. So I think that yeah. actually, Whoever jumps on this, I think, would be the winner in this. Yeah. I have a, my next door neighbor uh, has a business here in Cambridge. It's called Proactive Sports, and they uh, they sell uh, all kinds of sporting things, pre predominantly golf-related things. But he ships in to Canby two containers a month of just one product, and to have him to be able to to offload there instead of shipping it out from from the ports would be a boon to him. Mm -hmm. um, so, Where I think. Does he Get it now. He goes to the. They, port of they the port of Portland hauls it into him, but his his shop is right mm -hmm. well, it's down behind Canby Builders, basically. But just having it closer by and a facility like that, that I mean, I I've got to believe there's other companies in the area that would be the and, same. And way. we're in the middle of produce territory, so yeah. there's a lot of produce, and the road connection would take them right out to the country. Yeah. So you get I, better I access to with I-5 or whatever it would help to? A lot of, there's a lot of positive things. I think it's ideal. I think that a private developer should look into it seriously and jump on I know that the railroad owner, uh, Dick Samuels with Oregon Pacific Railroad, has voiced a positive support for the concepts. So. As long as we're talking about this, maybe uh, it might be worthwhile for <clears throat> Renata to prepare uh, some sort of one or two pager on this concept. I had to ask what a team track was when I thought I had never heard of it. Uh, 
immediately I went to the idea of a port of Canby where we, we had uh, yeah. uh, shipping coming and going. But uh, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that this has been done in other communities. I'd like to have some more information on it. It wouldn't hurt to have some uh, staff uh, indicate if there are any policy options that we may have in the future, private versus public, that, that type of thing. But it, it sounds like a heck of an opportunity uh, for us to uh, be able to market the Wygant property to, to, to folks that we could have multiple um, uh, folks shipping instead of just having that as one big piece. I think I, it, it's a new concept for the agency and, and uh, if there's no objection I, I wouldn't I'd encourage staff to kind of look into this. You, t you talked about the railroad owner that uh, contacts have already been made wouldn't mind taking a, a, a field trip by, by the agency out to take, take a look at uh, the train and the facility because this, this could in fact eat, enhance his business and, and what goes on and, and I, I could use a little bit better understanding of how that, how that works. Um, I believe it was Renata that you, you had brought this up at a, mm -hmm. um, a meeting several, so, months. Yeah, several months ago. Um, has there been dialogue with other like Wilson Construction and MEC and Potter and I've talked to Potter Industries. Okay. Uh, I talked to Scott Scarborough from Potter Industries, and he he's really interested in it. Mm -hmm. He felt it would be uh, something he could use, and so he okay. is interested. I haven't right. talked to anybody else. I don't know if Renata has or not, but uh, I think mm -hmm. you know, is that something that we can direct staff to maybe do a pros and cons and a yeah. aspect to. Because there will be eventually be some policy questions if we push this down, mm -hmm. and, and we should we should be prepared for it. But also, it would be interesting to see what other communities have done with this. I think that spur line that we have is just solid gold, mm -hmm. and, and if this would further enhance, I mean, it makes sense. It just sort of seems like a no-brainer instead of, instead of only having property owners have access to the rail, for us to be able to open that up and enhance it, that we could have people uh, who don't have access to the rail. Uh, in the industrial park want to buy lots there because of its proximity to it. Well, and also for for certain companies that store <clears throat> containers in their yard because they can't get them shipped back because there's an overabundance, you know, if you can consolidate containers in one area, you might be able to do uh, joint container loads of, of shipping. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's there's a lot of opportunity yeah. there. So, yeah. It might be interesting to find out if there are any facility like this close by because otherwise I think uh, you would have people coming in here. Uh, years ago, we used to have a siding down here where the truck, the little truck was, and they had actually a concrete dock there, and so you could bring stuff in on a flat car and roll it off, and then, or else you could take it off on a truck. And we had farm machine would come in there, you know, I think it was from Mich Fishers, and that was in Woodburn, come up here to, to unload off the flat car. So I think this would be an excellent use of that facility and I think would track a lot of interest around here since particularly now when the more of the stuff's coming out by containers yeah, how do you handle these things well there's so much being shipped out to uh, I think it's called Anderson hay down near the airport um, right. I don't know how many containers of, of hay they ship to oh, yeah. Asia uh, out of that location but that's uh, mm -hmm. that's what they do and if, I, I just think there's a lot of opportunity for a lot of businesses in Malala and Aurora and Woodburn. I think that would give us a little more visibility with uh, state and federal too for some maybe some dollars to improve the access uh, in the area too from I-5 so mm -hmm. on 99. So. Well, and I think uh, and we've heard that at the mayor as well with at uh, C4 on the county level in terms of you talk about getting we can get the trucks off the road and get them on the rail cars you know versus you know that's a minimal expense versus expanding 205, you know, any wider, I think that that's... It fits into that strategy. It does. Well. Yeah. So. Jim, is there anything that we need to give staff instruction? That, that's what I was just going to ask. Uh, Kurt, Kurt to go ahead, because I know Kurt was right. said. Is there an action item for tonight? I'm happy to pursue your comments and come back with All right. Well, I, I think it's, I mean, we've had bits and pieces of conversations for the last several weeks, and I think we're all anxious to get this yeah. on the table. <clears throat> Do you want to say something, Lisa? Or yes. Buzz? Okay. I, I think we're I like it. we're all anxious to get yeah. this on the track and yeah. and get it committed and bonded and built. 
Let me add that Renata first called me maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, talking about Team Track, just to assure that the design was compatible with Team Track. And as we looked at the design, I think it's completely compatible. It's one of the major benefits of having the grade separated crossing is you can then have a spur, you can have cars stacked up across the roadway. And both the artisan property <coughs> and the Wigan property, the grades are just ideal, I think, for, for access to the rail park. So no design impacts. If the Sequoia Park we designed it, it's nicely for a team track concept. Good. Great. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Anything else, gentlemen, on that? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for all your Thanks, work. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, urban renewal updates. Uh, plural. Dan's got hand. some um, information, Chairman Ayers, but I'd like to actually jump in in front of you if you don't mind. Um, if you would, I'd like to pass this out. This is information that was compiled by Sue Engels. And this is something uh, that you'd ask for just the fire department uh, on the August 22nd meeting. And this is the revenue that has been foregone by the different taxing districts. Thank you, Graham. And something that, and it's not all of them, there are 14 or 15 taxing districts, but these are the big ones. These are the big ones. And <coughs> what I was having Sue look up, uh, Sue Ryan was the, the plan as it was built in 1999. And there's a chart in there that shows what all of the taxing districts lost or were going to lose over the 20-year life of this. And actually, what I wanted to see was, uh, taking these numbers right here, how close they were. And in fact, these numbers are less than what was estimated in 1999, at least for the fire district. I haven't looked at all of them. It was kind of hard to read that thing Is upside down. Is there a copy that our gentleman from the fire district yeah, can have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and that number, I will say that... Um, Ted disagrees with that 175. He thinks it's a little more. He thinks it's 225. And if it is 225, it's $2,000 off of what was estimated in 1999 because the estimate in 1999 was 223. And I think I've talked to Ted, but I think maybe where he got his number is they have some local option levies and that they lose money on that also. And I don't know if uh, Sue just used their permanent rate it's used or not. Permanent rate times yeah. the, what that's called the urban Assessed valuation over the original closing data. Yeah. So uh, that's not in there. So, but the point being, back in 1999, mm -hmm. it was looked at what the loss to each, the foregone revenue would be to each taxing district. And it's pretty close, I think. Um, um, you know, a 10 year look and you're that close, I think that's pretty good. So, um, you know, I agree with Mr. Backstrom that there was foregone, but this was. You know, the numbers were there 12 years ago. And so that was one of the things that um, everybody was told was part of the plan. And so that was kind of a known thing. Not kind of, it was a known thing back then. And by the way, this was a committee of almost 18 people that started this thing and went through yeah. the first two or three years of working through all these things to, uh, to come up with the programs and the different things that we wanted to uh, put into the plan. So yeah. without getting into it deeper tonight, I think yeah. we can address some of Mr. Baxter's issues that uh, yeah. we re actually go through the uh, his 15 pages or whatever he had to read there to, uh, to well, see what the questions were. I don't, to be real honest, I don't think staff's going to spend a lot of no, time on saying. answering that. Okay. Um, I'm actually, before the meeting, ask Mr. Baxter if we go to lunch. Him and I, I get along with Mr. Baxter well. We're, I consider him a friend, and we'll go disagree on stuff. But, um, or agree. Or agree. You know, I, I, some of the stuff he said, I totally agree with. But some, I think, uh, anyway, we can talk about that. Mr. Baxter might go to lunch and discuss that. So, but I wanted to, you had asked that this be expanded Thanks. a little yeah. bit, so I wanted that out. Um, so I want to get that out to you. Another thing I wanted to point out tonight, or let you know tonight was, and I want to do it because Sue's here, uh, you're going to see next week at the council meeting uh, an authorization, a uh, resolution authorization, authorization resolution, uh, to go forward with bonds. And one of the things included in there is a $2.2 .2 million refunding amount for the 2003 and 2004 bonds. And what that means is we're going to be saving significant money over the life of those bonds. And Sue pursued that 
with Seattle Northwest and Carol Samuels of Seattle Northwest. But we need to roll it all into one, and you'll see what we've done. I think the packet came out today. Uh, but then when you roll that into one, you don't have to go out and get uh, a Moody's rating for each different bond issue, which is, that's eight dollars $9,000 to for a 30-minute telephone call. And you, literally, and you don't have um, different issuance costs, et cetera. You got one, one cost. So anyway, it's all rolled into one. The bridge, uh, the road Sequoia to 13th extension, the library project, and the refunding is all tied into one bond. And you'll see that uh, uh, in the resolution for, uh, that you'll be getting in your packet. Greg, you didn't talk about the numbers on the second page here. Yeah. Um, well, I think what this is saying is that the investment that was made, this, um, and Mr. Baxman was right, I sent out a memo, I think, that said right now we're at about $49, $50 million, if you include interest, et cetera. And if we take the $18 million that's still under the $51 million cap, remember, $51 million is the uh, uh, maximum amount of debt that this urban renewal district can incur. If you take that additional $18 million with interest, and this is a, I picked a number out of the air basically. I said with 18, let's say it's another 12 in interest, that gives you another $30 million that you would be paying out in principal and interest or, uh, for that 18 million. You add that to the 49 million that we've already got bonded, but that 49 million also included the library bond too. So, you know, just the library bond. But if you put that other 18 million out you know, with interest, 30 million, you're talking about $80 million in principal and interest. This was what I wanted to point out with this. I think I sent an email to the council regarding this information. And what this is saying that at, to this point, um, the investment has generated around $88 million. And can you say that was from urban renewal uh, investment? I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Uh, I'm well, saying that yes. Certainly the lion's share. The yes. lion's lion share, share, absolutely. Yeah. And another way to, and I didn't explain it very well when I sent that email out to the council, but if you think about the 3% maximum um, that you can do with right. Measure 4750, with that investment that was put in there, that makes that 3% even more. So we put in here that if you had taken that $65 million and there was no investment, that $65 million would have grown to $90 million, just with that 3%. But because there's been investment, that 3% is multiplying a bigger number. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I, it, it's hard for me to grasp that concept, but it's just simple math. So I think that um, even the 3% minimum has grown that because of the investment that the urban renewal has made in this area. So does that explain mm -hmm. the second page? Mm -hmm. So. Sure. I think our, our, the, the time and investment that the people that were involved in that 12 years ago, 15 years ago, as uh, Chairman Daniels said, has more than paid off. That would be Commissioner My, Daniels. Pardon? That would be Tonight, Commissioner that's Daniels. Commissioner. What, did I, what did I say? Chairman. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not the least bit offended. <laughs> Walt <laughs> might be. <laughs> uh, Slip of the slip. So anyway, that's, uh, thank you, Dan. I'm sorry. That's all. Yeah, well, I, I just want to make one comment. This, as you can see, this looks a little like the sheet you had before, but right. it's more columns. And so this is my new hobby um, <laughs> that, you know, I would keep expanding and improving this thing. I had auditors in all last week, so there's only so far I could get. But one thing I intend to do, and American Steel would be the best example, you know, the discussion on the second page is we cannot nail down exactly how much of the increased assessed valuation is due to urban renewal investments. We can kind of bracket it. We know, you know, we know the 3% would have happened anyway. Unless things were so bad, some places shut down and you got disinvestment. But, but it's impossible to nail it down completely. But one thing you can nail down, like with American Steel, is that they could not have located without the urban renewal improvements, mm -hmm. and they are not in the urban renewal district. So that money is going right now to all the taxing districts, and it wouldn't have been there mm -hmm. without the urban renewal district. There may be other businesses like that. So what I'm hoping to do, you know, with my hobby here is, is you know, 
do a little more research. So there's pros and cons, as the gentleman said, he was speaking when I came in. But one of the pros is these sort of things like American Steel that would not have happened, that are just kind of great. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad to see as you're preparing for retirement, yeah, you're developing a hobby. So I, was, uh, <laughs> I, do, I do hope you can continue this into retirement. Okay. I, see I have some other ideas, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> we can just start sending her information to just dabble with. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I see a potential right, volunteer. Yeah. Any more? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, just a brief update on uh, police facility for Saturday. Um, the, uh, the fine grading for the access road and parking lot to the lower level of the facility is, has been completed and we still have a few punch list items that we need to clear up before we issue a final occupancy permit for the facility, but uh, the police folks are uh, in the building. All their cars are off First Avenue, which is nice. Um, and the First Avenue project, we are still on schedule. Um, all the underground utilities have been completed, and that was probably one of the things that was the most difficult. And uh, as you probably noticed, we have two blocks paved, and actually they started early, they started late this afternoon, they started paving between Ivy and Brant, and not only they made the first street, but also made the parking area. They started paving today? I came through about... Uh I left the adult center about two o'clock, and it looked yeah, real close. Late this afternoon. Yeah, they'll yeah. be paving it tomorrow too. Good. So uh, it'll be nice to get both the street and the parking lot paved, and so hopefully um, the whole parking issue, I think, we're pretty much got under control. Um, uh, what uh, the uh, most of the electrical work has been done. You know, the city paid for the cost of providing electrical service from the meter to the panel. And uh, that's about 95% complete. And uh, we've also got an early shipment of our light fixtures. Mm -hmm. Most of those have been going up. Yeah. We have about uh, one block of our, our new mm -hmm. light posts. And um, I think those are the big big items. Well, the other big item I want to mention is that uh, beginning on September 17th, for about a two-week period, we're going to have to close Elm Street. We had a lot of storm uh, storm sewer work that went across the street, and we have to repave, rebuild, and repave that section. So uh, we'll that will again we'll start on September seventh. Dan, I've got a I've got a comment. I know the uh, the trauma that some of the businesses went through with the broken water main and the and the gas leak into the city hall area. Um, I am still amazed that there wasn't more trouble in the excavation through that street because of the age of the infrastructure that was under there and, and no maps. You know, I mean, if it weren't for their underground locators, um, you know, they, that saved a lot of it. But there was no, there weren't, were not good drawings of what was under there. Or and, were. and the age of the buildings, too. Yeah. Say 1902 <laughs> or that yeah. time and those buildings. Something? I mean, we had a few basements that are. Out under, under the, the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are the, is the, is it still under there? We or filled we up fill on gravel. <laughs> well, in one case, we actually uh, Just bridged. We actually built a sidewalk bridge over the, mm -hmm. over the basement. Maybe we can offer underground tours. Or yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Shanghai. <laughs> two, two things. One, um, uh, I, I did get a suggestion from a couple of the property owners that um, uh, they've almost given up trying to keep their windows and buildings clean as with the dust kicked up so to the extent that we might be able to remediate that with some power washing or something that, that might be good. Two, uh, if, if this project had gotten screwed up in any way between then and now uh, you'd be on the hot seat so I think you do deserve a, a job well done. That, uh, we're, we're on time and on budget, and that doesn't happen by accident. And Greg is definitely already working on maybe some cleanup work, so Good. we've already talked.